What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to get your door to latch shut. These are for those of you who are having trouble with a, a, a bent hinge or a door that's out of alignment that you just cannot get latched. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you out, so stay tuned. All right guys, so we're at the patio door here. I'm gonna show you that this thing does not want to close. So today I'm gonna to show you on video just how I'm going to solve this issue. So this is probably something that you're running into and exactly why you're here on the video. So a couple different things to check. You wanna make sure that the gap on the door is the same at the top and at the bottom. So my door is pretty well aligned in its space here. Uh, for some reason, this door jam is out of line with the other side of the door. So the hinge side of the door, you can see I have a, a narrower gap there, and then it comes up to a big gap here. So somebody has already adjusted this door to make this, uh, you know, even over here. So that's what you want to figure out first. Do you have a gap at the bottom or the top? Is it uh, basically one way or the other, or do you have an even gap? If you have an even gap, then most likely your hinge side does not need to be adjusted. So uh, with this door and some, um, some quality doors, you might have an adjustable hinge. So the adjustable hinge is nice because you can literally just take a Phillips screwdriver and you can adjust the door in or out. Um, it basically has an adjustable cleat here and it will allow you to adjust it. But if you don't have one of these, you can bend the bracket. Um, you can do a couple different things. You can pull the pin out and you can bend the bracket and that will bring your door closer or further away from the jam. So today it looks like that I am going to just concentrate here on my strike plate. So um, I have an even gap. If you don't have an even gap, you need to get your door to have an even gap. So, like I said, you can tweak this hinge one way or the other. Um, if you tweak it this way, it will pull your door up. If you tweak it back this way, it will go down. So you can take a pair of channel locks and you can actually tweak that hinge and get it to line up. So some interior door hinges are easy to tweak with a pair of pliers. Um, that might be a solution for you but it looks like my striker is just a little high down here. See, so you want the striker to come in right in the middle of the plate. So obviously mine's a little high. So what I'm gonna show you a little trick to see exactly where our problem area is, is we're going to paint this with a paint marker and then shut the door and see exactly where it falls. All right, for this, I'm literally just gonna paint this with a paint marker here. You only wanna paint the edge of your striker here. You don't need to be too crazy with it. Just get a nice, decent area there. And slide it back and forth a couple times. And it will leave a little residue here around the top. So you can see where um, it kind of streaked in some black here, and it's right here at the top. It's given us trouble. So this has always been too low. So whoever installed this door did not get this right. This whole thing needs to come up. Um, so we are, uh, this is something that we could probably just Dremel out here. Um, if you wanted to, you could take a file, a round file, and you could probably file out this little piece here and it would probably latch just fine. So it looks like somebody's tried to mess with the door before and stripped out a screw. Um, I'm gonna just file this out, really. Uh, I think I'm just gonna take out a little bit of material here and get this door to latch. If you do need to move it considerably, let's say if your striker is up here um, and it's way, way off, then you will need to take out your screws and notch your jam out up here with a chisel. So the chiseling only needs to go as deep as the striker plate. And then you need to make a little deep pocket here for the striker to fall into. But for this little minute adjustment here, all I'm gonna do is file out this. 
All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my file and I'm going to uh, just get rid of that edge there. Now, if you're a baller on a budget and you do not have a uh, file, you can literally use anything that you have around the house to uh, work that back a little bit. Chances are it's not that bad and you just need to get that corner out of there uh, to get it back into place. So uh, you could use a drill bit, uh, use the side of a drill bit and wear it out. Um, you could use a couple of different things if you're really limited and you don't have the means, um, you can make this work. So I'm just using a triangle file and trying to get this uh, basically to widen out at the top. So if this doesn't work, then we will go ahead and move the striker plate up a little bit. I'm not really worried about it. It'll be good for the video if we need to. So, all right, I... I opened that up a little bit. Let's see exactly um, how much it did. All right, so that one method of using a file to get that kind of uh, rounded out did not work. So we're gonna remove our strike plate. We're gonna move it up just a little bit here. Uh, still probably using our same hole here. Um, just chiseling this out a little bit more and move it up maybe a quarter of an inch so that we are at the center of our strike and make it easy. I'm going to go up to about here. Cut our weather stripping out of there. All right, simple as that. So you always want to uh, first hit the chisel in like this and then slice up. So you could even do a little bit of this by hand. If you have a nice sharp chisel, um, you can chisel out a lot of this by hand. So um, just take your time, be patient, get a little area cleaned out here for this. So now that we have that cleaned out for the strike plate to move up a little bit, um, it looks like I'm going to need to uh, move that corner up a little bit as well. So we'll go ahead and depends on what, what door frame material you have, but usually you can do a lot of this by hand and just moving the chisel around here like that, clean it out. Make sure our strike moves up where we need it. Okay, now we're going to take some of this material out here and move this area up here so this is all by hand here and I just kind of move this back and forth and then you can just cut that out so if you have a nice sharp chisel you do not need a hammer um, you just kind of move it in there and tear it out all right now we will have to move our holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna always pre-drill your holes in your door jam here. So you don't want to strip it out um, or uh, split the casing. So uh, I guess it's not really casing. You don't wanna split the door jam here. So uh, it's very important that you go ahead and pre-drill the hole here. All right, for my pre-drill, I'm just gonna go ahead and hold my hold my strike plate up and then we're gonna get kind of a center going on here and we're gonna put our screws back in all right our strike plates back in place so let's go ahead and try to test the door close and I may have to take out a little bit more material here um, I'll just go ahead and do it just so that I know for sure that it's going to close here and call that a day 
All right. Just like that. All right, let's test it close. All right, and now it shuts. So we have a great fitting door release there. Boom. All right, guys, so that wraps up another video here at the Durbin Compound. If you found some value in my content and you're still around, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. And I guess if you click that subscribe button, we'll see you guys in the next video.